Welcome to the Happy Yuppie Podcast. Oh, hi there. This is Mighty Rasing, the blogger behind PinoyYuppie.com. And I am really excited and happy to introduce to you the podcast of my blog, which is the Happy Yuppie Podcast. So, naisip mo, no? Bakit Happy Yuppie? Um, because, you know, sometimes in this... In this time and age where we are inundated with technology, with demands from work, uh, there's so many things that we want out of life and out of work. Sometimes, instead of us becoming happy because we have work, we are so pressured to do so much more. Uh, gusto natin, kaya natin abutin lahat, or gusto natin, masyadong mataas yung sweldo natin because we have so many dreams, so many options. And so, yung iba sa atin, we tend to jump from one company to another, becoming career butterflies in the process. This podcast will help you pursue your calling. And so along the way, you know, what we are going to do is to help you discover your passions, identify your skills, and also look at the needs of the world that you can target. So halimbawa, when we talk about markets, when we talk about industries, that's exactly the needs of the world that you can target, that you can address, di ba? Because if you can offer something to the world, eh, meron at meron kang magiging trabaho. Another thing that will that this podcast will give you is to help you engage the world. So, I have no problem if you are an employee, although yung ibang mga nagsusulat ng entrepreneurship, ano, parang sinasabi nila that uh, quit 9 to 5, you know, that be, being an entrepreneur is the way to become rich the way to be to to a fulfilling life and uh, well maybe it's for them but uh, honestly entrepreneurship is not for everyone and so if you want to remain an employee and become really really good at it then why not diba um of course we are also going to feature um additional additional episodes on entrepreneurship Kasi uh, a lot of young people, young professionals are also venturing into that. At natutuwa ako because in this economy of ours, uh, having more entrepreneurs means having more businesses. And having more businesses means having more employment para sa mga mas maraming Filipinos. And then lastly, we are going to talk about how you can sustain your life. Uh, whether you are an employee, an entrepreneur, or what I call a social servant, which is, by the way, yung social entrepreneurs o kaya uh, those who are into the industries na hindi masyadong nababayaran or wala masyadong pera doon, um, this podcast will help you discover ways to sustain your life. So in a nutshell, what this podcast is about, The Happy Yuppie, is the podcast that will help you pursue your calling, engage the world, and sustain your life. Initially, you can expect this podcast to run for two times in a month every other Wednesday. You can expect uh, the podcast to air over at PinoyYuppie.com. And I encourage you to subscribe. Um, we don't have an iTunes channel yet, but that will come um, along the way. I'm definitely going to inform you as soon as we have that. And then, um, you can also subscribe through RSS feeds. Kung hindi ka sigurado what RSS feeds are, don't worry. I'm going to provide uh, links in the show notes so you can learn how to do that. And then, for the next episodes, I'm going to feature employees, entrepreneurs, and even social servants so, na pwede maging example mo on how you too can pursue your calling, engage the world, and sustain your life. Our guest for the first episode, I'm happy to tell you, is, is an author and an engineer. Well, hindi siya yapi, but he was a young professional once. And um, based on his story, he was able to do writing and he was also an engineer at the same time. So, pakinggan natin kung ano kanyang kwento. Okay? So, here's our interview. For our first episode, we are very, very blessed na kasama natin ang isang author. He has had several books already. And surprisingly, ang kanyang undergrad ay... Guess what? Hindi connected sa writing <laughs> or not even sa literature. So, um, I learned from his website and also from the books that he has written na isa siyang chemical engineer by profession. And so, uh, he has written one of the books that I've 
uh, I bought nung medyo may konting experience na ako sa work. <laughs> And so, without further ado, let me introduce to you si Mr. Nelson TD. So, Sir Nelson, how are you? Thank you and congratulations on your very first podcast. <laughs> Sir, um, siguro po umpisahan ko na on that note, ano, since you are a writer, pero you're a chemical engineer. How did you make the shift from, you know, from being an engineer to a writer? Kasi sabi nila, kung magaling ka daw sa sciences and math, medyo hindi ka daw magaling sa, sa English. I'm not sure if that's true in your case. Well, this is what they call multitasking. Actually, I already have been a writer even before I chose to be an engineer. Mm. It just so happened that I thought that writing would only make me a starving artist. So I chose <laughs> to take a more practical course, which is engineering, and hopefully get a lucrative job later on. But mm. I always have been a writer at heart. So it's also I'm blessed that I have, I have an interest in the sciences. I'm good in math. And it serves me well in both counts because even in business or in mm-hmm. engineering, you also have to know how to write well, mm-hmm. technical reports, mm-hmm. problem analysis. So it serves its purpose very well. Mm-hmm. So at least, sir, you know, in your case, you've, you've successfully disproved the notion that <laughs> yung, yung, yung dichotomy of arts and the sciences. Yes, ano that's <laughs> true. People think that if you go to the arts, you cannot be in the sciences and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So, um, Sir Nelson, uh, what what do you do for a living now? I mean, uh, what's what's your job? Of course, apart from writing, you know, uh, what's your present job, sir? You will laugh. I have a third side of my life. I'm now into sales and marketing. Mm-hmm. So I started as a writer in my uh, high school days. Then I took engineering in college. Now I'm into sales and marketing of industrial goods. We're talking about packaging, about bottles mm-hmm. and crowns and cartons. Mm. So it's very good because I get to combine both courses. Because in my job, I have to learn a lot of technical mm-hmm. terminology, process, and stuff. So it's very good. I have an engineering background to understand the nuts and bolts of my of my job. Mm-hmm. So, sir, um, are you enjoying your job right now? Very good because you get to learn something new every day. Uh-huh. Just when you thought that you know all the aspects of the technology, there's something new here that I never thought of before. Something as a tip to your young listeners, always find out why things work this way instead of just mm. being handed down this is the thing you should do this is the instruction you have to find out why why mm-hmm. does this work why not do this instead of that mm-hmm. and so it's very fun for me every day I get to learn something new about this process this product even the market mm-hmm. even the people I work with so the day that I stop learning will mm-hmm. be the day I start getting bored mm-hmm. So sir, um, so it's it's in sales and marketing, pero you're an engineer. So is this and the, also a writer underneath? Yes, pa. And a writer pa. <laughs> Talk about having an identity crisis. <laughs> so sir, ano, um, is it in the uh, manufacturing industry or or is it an industry all its own? <laughs> Correct. Actually, it's a it's it's a it's a manufacturing firm based in mm-hmm. Laguna. Mm-hmm. Uh, although we can also import, but basically the fun is like I said. It combines my being an engineer by knowing the process in a factory mm-hmm. and also how it's used in a customer's factory. Mm-hmm. And all the while also, you get to use your human relation skills and your writing skills, of mm-hmm. course, because when you try to send an email to a customer, you have to write very well and not to mention convincingly. Mm-hmm. So, sir, did you, did you ever... Um Did you always imagine yourself working in this field? No, I never dream I'd be landing on this kind of a job. <laughs> uh, it's because when I was young, actually, I wanted to be a cartoonist. Whoa, really? Yes, but like I said, starving <laughs> artists again. So I'm thinking, okay, I'll be an engineer and I'll probably be landing in a uh, uh-huh. shift engineer, being in a graveyard shift, working in a factory out there in the boondocks. But <laughs> afterwards, I got uh, a little bit bored and I decided to think, why do people buy the products we make? And that's why I took extra courses. I got an MBA mm-hmm. and I shifted to marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yes, sir, when you, when you graduated from college, did you uh, sit down and plan your career or did you just build your wings on the way down to fire to paraphrase one of my favorite authors si Ray Bradbury well, Ray, Ray Bradbury is also my favorite author Ooh. too uh, oh. so it's like when I graduated I only had one simple strategy mm-hmm. get graduated get a diploma get a job and see where the job will take you so mm-hmm. I never had any master plan Mm-hmm. And I think pe- probably that's also true for most people nowadays. Mm-hmm. Actually, to be fair, having such a master plan is difficult to make. Mm-hmm. In the first place, we're not given such planning skills while in mm-hmm. college. Mm-hmm. Secondly, plans rarely work because there's mm-hmm. always factors that are outside your control. Mm-hmm. You cannot control the people who hire you, who will promote you. You cannot control the economy. 
you may have a very beautiful plan, but if let's say there's a economic crisis, you mm-hmm. get retrenched, there goes your plan. Mm-hmm. So in, in those cases, sir, since you've been working for several years already, mm-hmm. uh, how did you deal with those, uh, let's just say a little bit of the stumbling blocks or things that were beyond your control affecting your career path? Uh, did you did you ever have some frustrating uh, times in your career? Oh, definitely. My career included probably one or two stretches of being jobless. That's how mm-hmm. bad the economy was then. Mm-hmm. I think you've heard of the Asian crisis in the late uh, 1990s. Mm, but yes, basically... Sir. The, f- the common thing is that despite their setbacks and despite there are what I call career wildernesses, I always feel that God is always there. There's mm. always a reason for the downside as well as mm-hmm. the upside. Mm-hmm. So for your guests or for your listeners, I believe it's always, there will always be valleys. Okay? Mm-hmm. We can always be on the mountaintops in our mm-hmm. careers. But the, the comfort we have is that I've been around for 30 years, so I can speak mm-hmm. from experience, mm-hmm. that don't fear the valleys because eventually God will bring you up again. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's that's sound advice, sir. Because uh, a lot of us who just graduated, you know, are young, and sometimes yeah. we, we have we tend to have an overestimation of our skills and our energies. Oh, yeah. And I know I know a lot of friends who jump from one job to another to another to another. <laughs> so. Uh, in your case, sir, uh, over 30 years, how many companies have you worked for? This will probably be my eighth, so I know what you're talking about. Eight? Yes, that's oh, sir, I mean, uh, it's over 30 years, that's eight. Sir, yes. uh, I know some some of my peers who, who have been working for 10 years, and they've been in eight or more companies. Well, I know somebody <laughs> has been working for 30 years, but stayed with one company, so it takes all kinds. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's something very curious. I think the question will be, why do many people hop? Mm-hmm. And there, there are many reasons, but I suspect one key reason is this. You have to know what you want to do with your life. Mm-hmm. Basically, mm-hmm. if you have, that implies that you really don't know what you want. Mm-hmm. And when you, don't, when you do not find it in your current job, you try to look for the proverbial greener pasture out there. Mm-hmm. But if you just sit back, stay back for a while and examine what do I want to do with my life, and I think, therefore, you have a more targeted approach to the job or career mm-hmm. you want to mm-hmm. have, and then chances are you have the courage. Chances are you'll stay there longer. You'll be happier there. And mm-hmm. of course, you'll be much more productive. Mm-hmm. So, sir, even if you don't have a plan, mm. at least you should know mm. what you want. Correct. Mm-hmm. You should know yourself, actually. Mm-hmm. Then from there, you know what you want. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, sir, uh, I, I, I can notice, actually, the way you talk about your work, you're, that you are passionate about mm-hmm. your work. So, w- was that passion uh, always there or it was, did you have to work on it? Well, actually, it's because I really have a thrill of giving my best. So whether I'm in sales or engineering or in writing, there's a certain satisfaction that Mm -hmm. you're giving your best to it. I think I'm one of the people who will not feel comfortable or I can even sleep well at night if I go through the day so-so mediocre, not Mm -hmm. so good quality. But if I give my best and see the results thereof, Mm -hmm. it makes me want to, wow, I had a good day today and I can wake up and see myself proudly in the mirror in the morning. Mm -hmm. Sir, um... That that kind of motivation is really important, you know. And w- when you're working, it's mm. the the dedication to excellence yes. and uh, not just yung pwede na. Ah, that's true. Because uh-huh. uh, so, so, some workers, um, especially these days, lalong lalo na, there's so many distractions for our generation. Ah yes, <laughs> Facebook on company time. Tell exactly. me about it. Okay. <laughs> Sir, ano po eh? uh, sometimes movies, gimmick gimmick, social yeah, life, that's true. That's and, true. and all that. And and sometimes, um, especially in the call centers and in the, in the BPO industry, mm, sometimes, yes. uh, because I've worked there for one year also, um, one of the joke I- in the in the industry is that there is always an epidemic of migraine and LBM. Oh. <laughs> because at any given day, there would be people calling in, say, I have LBM, I have migraine. So <laughs> anywhere between 10 to 15 people <laughs> well, saying the same excuse. Well, let's just hope LBM stands for looking for better management. Oh. <laughs> Not the other LBM. <laughs> yes, sir. So, um, Sir Nelson... Um, so apart from the commitment to excellence, of course, you, we, we, we want our audiences, our young workers to, to give their best yes. in whatever they, they do. But, uh, and that's, that sometimes put us in an uncomfortable situation where uh, we tend to reach the limit of our skills. Uh-huh. So in your case, sir, um, did you ever experience that? 
that you're at the say you're stretching yourself and reaching out but uh, there's just a little bit more <laughs> that is true we'll always have situations where we feel that we've given our all and then to be asked to take the next step is beyond our ability that's where now I believe we have also to remind your listeners that when you graduate from college that doesn't mean your education is over mm-hmm. the reality is that when you're out there in the real world you have to keep on learning And sometimes even what you've learned before may no longer be true. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you may even have to unlearn certain things. Mm -hmm. So one good mindset, and this is where employers will love you for it, is that you always be open to new ideas, new learnings. When people teach you something, be all ears and ask questions. Mm -hmm. There's the passion to learn as Mm -hmm. well as the passion to produce or to Mm -hmm. work. When you do that, you'll always be fresh and you'll always be valuable, not only to the employer, but also to God himself. Mm -hmm. So, sir, um, in your case, how did you work on upgrading your skills? In my case, for example, it's always tricky. Whenever we talk about technology, you know, it will be obsolete in so-and-so time. Mm -hmm. So I would always talk to experts in the field. We would talk to German guys who visit our factory. We would talk to suppliers from, let's say, America. And they would always be... Their, their mm. pulse will be always on the latest trend. So I would talk to them, okay? Mm-hmm. I would have a verbal summary of what's the latest thing. Mm-hmm. If I get interested, I would then take the effort to surf to the internet for mm-hmm. more formal literature. Nowadays, there is no more excuse mm-hmm. not to learn because it's always there in Google mm-hmm. or in Wikipedia or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. When you do have further interest, then you have the option to go into seminars or mm-hmm. sign up for extra training. The point is you must always take initiative on your own to learn, not mm-hmm. just wait for the employer to bring you to a training course. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, sir, it's the the passion for learning. I, I like that, <laughs> what you said. Because um, especially now, uh, technically, we really don't have an excuse because we're just swimming in a sea of information. And yeah. you see people in, in MRT, in buses, holding their devices. Although... Sometimes they're just playing games, but <laughs> I know of a lot who, who go to Google for every single thing. I mean, they get interested with an actress, they search for whatever. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yung iba naman nagbababad po sa YouTube kasi yes. yung mga videos ang dami-dami. But I, I like what you said, sir. Uh, you, you search for the literature, pero before you search, you actually talk with the experts. Yes, you have to first find what you want to know. You have mm-hmm. an idea. And not only that, if you talk to the expert, because I'm also the kind of guy who learns by listening. Mm-hmm. Some people can learn by, let's say, doing or reading. But in my case, if I listen to somebody, chances are when I now listen to the vi- when I look at the video or read the ah, so this is what the guy said. This is what the mm-hmm. guy meant. It gives you a, a reinforcement. Mm-hmm. It works. It's uh, it can work on all all levels. Mm-hmm. But sir, uh, these experts that you uh, talk with, uh, do you also get in touch with them, say by email or by phone later? That's the beauty. Also, I can always ask clarificatory questions. Mm-hmm. I can ask them the what if. I mm-hmm. can even ask them what are who are the other guys or mm-hmm. what are the other books I should be familiar with. Mm-hmm. So, sir. Uh, Ibig sabihin pala, yung mga new graduates natin, bawal lang suplado. <laughs> oh, oh, they pwede know it all. That's, that's the thing they also have to watch out. Nobody really knows everything. Mm-hmm. Okay? And then that's where always the attitude, especially for those who are new in the company. Mm-hmm. They're always there to learn. Actually, mm-hmm. they're out there to prove themselves. Mm-hmm. They have to justify that the, that the employer has done the right thing to hire them. But the point there also is to learn as much as they can to practice as much as can and therefore to improve as much as they can. Mm-hmm. It serves them also well strategically because later in later as the years go by, your value goes up because of the greater knowledge and experience and the contacts you've developed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, sir, yung, ano, yung networks talaga. Kasi yes. uh, sometimes among college students at yung mga new graduates, sometimes there are those who boast of na it's not what you know, but who you know. Yun yung sinasabi nila. <laughs> but in a sense, siguro, there's some truth to that because the, the people that, that we know actually also help us improve and help us uh, develop contacts in whatever industry that we are in. Correct. Actually, the, the, the proverb, it's not what you know, it's whom you know, mm-hmm. It can be seen positively, actually. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's viewed negatively as palakasan mm-hmm. or backer. But actually, even if, let's say, you're job hunting, it helps to know who are the people who have the authority to hire you. Mm. So in that sense, it's a good thing. 
the other thing is, it's also to know who are the people who can be your mentors. Mm -hmm. I mean, genuine mentors. And they're mm -hmm. a blessing to you because mm -hmm. they're the ones who would see potential in you and actually pour themselves out to you. And therefore, you'll be like the next great person in the industry, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, sir, did you, did you have mentors along the way? Yes, I actually am blessed with spiritual mentors and also corporate mentors. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the earlier jobs I had, they actually had a formal mentorship, mentoring mm -hmm. program. Executives are also tasked to be a mentor to this management trainee here and there. Mm -hmm. So I'm very blessed to have those kinds of people. Mm -hmm. The thing about mentors is that these are the people who will not only teach you the nuts and bolts, but also mm -hmm. values, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing to teach them how to run a machine. Mm -hmm. It's another way, it's another thing to teach them how to be honest, to mm -hmm. have, to stand in integrity, mm -hmm. to be, to be very industrious, mm -hmm. to be a team player, and so on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Palasara, no? It's not just about what you can produce, but it's also about your integrity, also the values that you need to develop. So speaking of values, sir, kasi, uh, I've read your book, yung, uh, your first job. Sir, what motivated you to write the book? Actually, I've been working 30 years in the professional field. And of course, along the way, I get to learn things that students or fresh graduates do not learn in the textbooks or mm -hmm. even in the classroom. Mm -hmm. These are the realities. Mm -hmm. And my heart will go out. If I see a young man making the same mistakes as I've done, mm -hmm. or I would say something like this, how I wish this guy knew this thing, which I mm -hmm. learned the hard way. Mm -hmm. So to shorten the, the, the pain and maybe to accelerate <laughs> the learning curve, I wrote the book. Uh -huh. And it's dedicated to people out there to read it and you know, mm -hmm. be learning from the experts also whom I interviewed, and so mm -hmm. that they will also learn how to accelerate and fast track their growth in their mm -hmm. career. Mm. Wow. Uh, actually, sir... When when I was when I was a new graduate actually I I searched for books because one of my learning styles is I read books mm -hmm. I, and now we have a lot of blogs also but in the Philippines sir surprisingly we don't have a lot of career blogs there are so many entrepreneurship blogs there's so many relationship blogs and books there's so many uh, make money online entrepreneurship and those kinds of things but we don't have a lot of blogs dealing with the uh, the pains and the frustrations of workers. We have, uh, sir, uh, I've I've been frequenting uh, PinoyExchange.com and looking at some of the posts, uh, sa the working Filipino, uh -huh. and there were some complaints there. Some of them are basic, like halimbawa, it's is it okay for me to follow up sa HR or may uh -huh. nagtatanong din doon, um, what will happen if I if I do an awol, mga ganyan. So, and some sa, some folks sa call center, they do have some advice blogs. Pero sir, apart from that, we don't have a lot. So, I think your your book is a really good good guide sa ating mga, mga new graduates. And by the way, for you listeners, uh, we do have a feature actually on the book of Sir Nelson. Um, just look at our blog, pinoyapi.com, it's it's right there. <laughs> Hanapin nyo na lang. <laughs> okay. So, sir, why use the story of Joseph from the Bible? I love Joseph. He's one of my few favorite people in the Old Testament and it's also quite relevant to the workplace. The mm -hmm. other two I can think of will be Nehemiah and David, but let's mm -hmm. go back to Joseph. He's, in my estimation, a real-life character. Mm -hmm. Not just because he existed, but because most of the things he dealt with are also based on real life problems which you and I face nowadays. Let, give me, let me give you at least two examples. Number one is, he had to deal with difficult people. Mm -hmm. Imagine how he started. His own brother sold yeah. him down the river as a slave mm -hmm. to a foreign country. So if you think you have problems with this gossiper or this backbiter <laughs> or this integrero mm -hmm. in the office, well, look at this guy. Uh -huh. The other thing is that he also had a share of setbacks. Imagine mm -hmm. being framed for attempted rape by the boss's wife. Mm -hmm. And then when he was trying to help people out, these people forgot about mm -hmm. him. So that resonated, that resonated to me that, hey, this is a real life character. He faced the same pain and heartache as we did. Mm -hmm. He went through the same disappointments, but Ultimately, the beautiful ending, and I think you know the ending, he was mm. catapulted to be mm -hmm. second in command of the most powerful mm -hmm. nation in his time, is that ultimately, God knows everything, mm -hmm. God sees everything, and at the end, he will exalt you mm -hmm. in his time if the time is right. Mm -hmm. And sir, uh, from what I remember from my Sunday school days, mm -hmm. and also from watching Joseph the Dreamer, it's that uh, Joseph had a dream. And at first, di po ba, he... 
he did not know how to interpret those dreams pero he kept those dreams alive even even at the um even if he was experiencing setbacks and and adversity and kaya din po siguro uh, that's that's something relevant for a lot of our young people young graduates now it's to keep those dreams alive sometimes uh we look at the world and see that we don't have a lot of um opportunities or some of them are just looking to go abroad right away pero i think if yung story ni Joseph is the testament of um holding on to your dreams and of course holding on to God as as the source of the dream kaya yon and sir another thing that i really love with your book is the the interviews from the experts i mean that was a wealth of material from so many executives and people who are in the trenches Sir, um, from those interviews that you've had, what's your what's your favorite part? What's your biggest takeaway from those interviews? I love the one about, well, one of the people whom I interviewed would be Tony Melotto, Kawal Kalinga. Mm. And imagine this, he's a very well-paid executive in one of the biggest multinational firms, okay? Mm-hmm. But he turned his back to it because he said something like this, there's more to life than just earning a lot of money. So what he was thinking now is, I should do something to help the nation. And so as you know, what happened, he led this movement to build not only houses, but communities. Mm -hmm. He wanted to dedicate his life now to help his fellow people. He's been there. He's seen already the riches. He's seen the fame. He's seen the glory. And at the end of the day, Mm -hmm. he says, what for? Mm -hmm. When I die, what will happen? What will I really give to my children? What legacy will I give to the next generation? And this gives you another clue that uh, the key takeaway to, let's say, of all those interviews is this. Don't be limited by your job alone. You mm-hmm. look at something bigger. Mm-hmm. And the way to do that is to, some, is to follow somebody bigger, and that's God himself. Amen. Wow. And sir, um, speaking of following something else apart from your main career, ano, uh, kasi nga, um, it's not just books that you're writing. You also contribute to some publications, sir. Ano? Um, d- did you always write, sir, when you were starting your career as an engineer, or did it come later? Actually, I was already writing when I was in high school. Ah, so it was a continuous yes, journey. Yes, it seems to be one of those gifts that I had. You know, it's on, it's a hobby. I like mm-hmm. to say, oh, I'm a writer, but I just, you know, keep it to myself. Don't even mm-hmm. dare look at a manuscript. I'll die of shame. <laughs> but afterward, it got to be sharper. That skills got sharper mm-hmm. and sharper. So, sir, do you do you still uh, find time to, to write? Because, I mean, being an in- engineer and in a very big company, parang that's that's a challenge. Because a lot of our young people now, pag uwi nila sa bahay, well, actually, after office, some of them would go with friends, go out, have uh, you know coffee, or some some of them drink, some of them go into socialization, whatever. <laughs> but and so, pag dating ng bahay, sa sabi nila, I'm so tired, I can't do anything anymore. <laughs> so how did you find time, sir, to write even in the midst of your busy schedule? Actually, I have the same problem. When I when I go home, I also get too tired to write. So what mm-hmm. I do is sometimes I write before I go to work. When I'm oh. still fresh and I'm at my peak or mm-hmm. my mental peak, the other thing will be to use some parts of the weekend or even mm-hmm. holidays. Mm-hmm. Of course, I balance it. I have to spend time with my lovely wife. I have mm-hmm. to spend time with family. I have to also read my own books so mm-hmm. that uh, I will always be refreshed by other people's insights. Mm-hmm. I cannot be just give and give, but I have to also have to uh, mm-hmm. be fed by the best minds ever outside. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, sorry, um, do you have a set schedule or do you write Whenever you have the chance. I'm, <laughs> I'm one of those into creative chaos. I don't have a oh. set schedule. <laughs> I know some of them are really, are, are really disciplined. They have a set time and a set uh-huh. place for everything. But me, I'm just one of those free-flowing types. <laughs> but sorry, I, I think it works in your case. Uh, lalang lalang na, being an engineer, it's a, it, it can be a demanding work, I could imagine. <laughs> yeah. And sir, um, have you had any chance to work with some of our young graduates in the past few years? Young graduates. Actually, I gave a talk before at the university. It's all for career development. Um, then for, actually, I also have my own blog, mm-hmm. www.nelsond, that's one word, dot com. Mm-hmm. It's also, you'll notice if you look at the entries, it's very work-oriented lately. Mm-hmm. So that will also serve as a resource for people, not just necessarily newly hired, but also people who are already probably tenuous in the journey. Mm-hmm. But basically, I do have a heart for people who are just starting because mm-hmm. it's like if you set them straight in the right direction at the start, imagine how far they'll go if they continue in that direction. Mm-hmm. And sir, and um, 
from some of the articles that I've read, say from Rappler.com and a couple of others, uh, the median age of Filipinos is 23.1 years old. So mm-hmm. it means that we are not in the peak of our productivity yet. Mm-hmm. In your case, sir, what was, uh, let's say, what was, what's the age range where you were most productive and you were most energetic? Of course, maybe it's now, but <laughs> for the benefit of our young, 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 young graduates. Actually, we, we should always be productive, but the mm-hmm. quality of your being productive varies. When you're early in your career, no, sometimes your productivity will be the routine, the process, the, the, the credit debit of an accountant or the push this button here and there for an engineer. But later on, as you ripen in your career, your productivity becomes more and more strategic. Mm -hmm. It may be more in terms of thinking or leadership or Mm -hmm. communication. So we'll always be productive but in different ways. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the evolution of your career should also reflect Mm -hmm. the evolution of yourself as a person. Mm -hmm. So sir, uh, speaking of evolution, since we do have a lot of technologies now like smartphones, uh, the connectivity, the internet, and... uh, and also, I'm really glad that you do have a website and uh, a blog that people can visit, actually. And, sir, um, how do you keep up with, with these technologies? Because, well, diba, we have some Lolo techies, Lola techies. I'm not saying you're a Lolo, sir, but... <laughs> but, I mean, there, we, we have some, say, those who are in their 40s or 50s. And I hear some stories na na there are some executives who are not very comfortable with with technology that they still let their secretaries do the encoding for their emails and stuff so how do you keep up with technology sir i just jump in i just grab the Uh keyboard and play around with it Uh no really that's how i learn sometimes i have like for example i have a younger cousin who's very very techy so i asked her can you do this for me oh by the way how, how do you do it so later mm. on i don't have to bug you for it <laughs> but basically whatever i learn let's say a microsoft uh, document mm-hmm. or a facebook mm-hmm. or a wordpress i just jump in and just fiddle around with the keyboard mm-hmm. and there you go nice so sir since you've been writing for quite some time so y- you you were Probably you're one of the writers now who started using a typewriter. You know, the, the yes, noisy type, the taka taka Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then uh, jumping into the 21st century and now we just do everything online. <laughs> yes, actually I'm one of the generation who used those six and a half floppy disks. <laughs> you remember those gadgets, right? Yes, sir, I do. I mean, uh, I, I went to college 1999. So uh, uh, I'm in the transition from analog to digital. Yeah. I mean, this generation now, I think... I feel sad for them <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because you, they, they missed a lot. <laughs> yeah, they missed the good old days. <laughs> so, um, Sir Nelson, thank you so thank you very much for agreeing to this interview. But before we end, I would just like to ask you, uh, do you have any words of advice for those who are being hired for the first time? The key advice I'll give to those people would be like this. Always think what you can do for your employer, not mm-hmm. what your employer can do for you. One of the biggest mistakes a young man can make is to select a job based on what he can get. The mm-hmm. other thing is that sometimes when he applies for a job, he'll say, oh, you know, if I go to your company, uh, I'll be fulfilling my dreams of going abroad mm. or being like this, like that. No, no. The employer is out there for mm-hmm. his own interest. That's the reality. Mm-hmm. And therefore, he'll hire people on the basis of those who will help him, mm-hmm. the employer, achieve his goals. Mm-hmm. Therefore, if you are a college student or a fresh graduate or a, somebody's new looking for a new job, always speak in terms of what you can do for mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. And that's where now you array, you marshal your qualification, your skills, mm-hmm. even your life experiences, and tell the employer, if you hire me, I can do this for you. Mm-hmm. And that will be also mm-hmm. be your ticket to going up the corporate ladder. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, friends, listeners, I think that's a very, very good advice that we focus not on what we can get, you know, the, the amount of salary, the travel and all that. But we need to work first and foremost on what we can give, what we can serve to those who... Uh, to the companies or bosses that we are going to apply for. And um, Sir Nelson, before I forget, in your book, uh, faith is also an integral part of it. And of course, uh, I myself also know that our faith reflect who we are and also how we view God. And in your case, sir, and maybe uh, just some parting words in addition to what you've already said, uh, the role of faith in, in, in our 
working life and in our lives in general? Okay, <clears throat> many people think of faith as only a Sunday thing. Mm-hmm. The reality is that faith can be a 24-7 experience. Think of yourself as a co-partner with God Himself. Mm. God is in the business of blessing people, providing for people, helping mm-hmm. people, and He wants to use people mm-hmm. like you and me. And so therefore, if you, are in a, if you have a skill that will serve, let's say, a poor person or a hurting person mm-hmm. or a sick person or a person who needs this and, this, that, this and that product there, He wants to use you as His vehicle. Mm-hmm. And that will be a great mindset for you also in your search for excellence. Mm-hmm. So, sir, uh, I think that it's also a good mindset that uh, you're not just serving your boss. You're, we are also serving God. So, uh, Sir Nelson, what's the best way for our listeners to get in touch with you? Well, they can get in touch with me through my blog. There's also I also have a personal email. It's nelson underscore d at hotmail.com. How about your books, sir? Where can they get a copy of Your First Job, uh, A Practical Guide to Success? They're available in all major bookstores nationwide. Mm. Okay. So, uh, friends, if you're not able to take note of that, don't worry. We are going to provide the links in our show notes. And um, we are very, very thankful to Sir Nelson. I know he's a very busy guy. And we also want to take uh, to thank his wife, Mom Lucy, who's actually here with us in the booth right now. So I'm hoping that you picked out a lot of lessons. It's a, it's a, I think it's a power pack episode right now. And so uh, you can expect more of this in the coming episodes of the Happy Yuppie. And uh, what we want to do here at PinoyYuppie.com is to help you develop that sense of purpose, not just in your work, but also in your life. So this is Mighty for the Happy Yuppie. And do check out our website at pinoyyuppie.com.